Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can integrate CrowdStrike into our current Seam solution using Copilot to actually do the provisioning for us to make the integration with CrowdStrike a lot simpler. What Copilot is going to do is give our Seam stack the ability to ingest CrowdStrike logs directly from CrowdStrike's platform. CrowdStrike is a popular security vendor that we see pretty frequently and their antivirus agent is a great tool to stack onto your Wazoo EDR agent. This integration will allow us to ingest those events directly into our Seam stack rather than having to jump into CrowdStrike's portal to view specific alerts and events that CrowdStrike can potentially be flagging. So we always like to focus on the single pane of glass approach, which results in any security event that we want to ingest into the Seam stack, we need to have the ability to do so. So what you guys will first need to do is logging into CrowdStrike's platform, you will, will need to create an API client. Now you can give it a client name of whatever you want. This is just gonna be for your own reference, but while creating the API, you need to make sure that it has the correct API scopes applied to it, where in our case, we need the event streams to have read access. And essentially kind of what's happening under the hood, if we look at CrowdStrike's documentation, they provide, and I've actually containerized the Falcon Seam connector for you guys, so it'll be, which makes the deployment within Copilot actually possible. I'll walk you guys through that in a little more details uh, throughout this video. But what's happening under the hood is that the Falcon Seam connector that is gonna be running within your infrastructure, so we're actually gonna run this on a container, within a container on the same VM that Copilot is running on. So this is going to be within your own infrastructure. And this Seam connector is going to do be responsible for doing two things. It is first going to reach out to CrowdStrike's Firehose endpoint, it's essentially just an API endpoint, that all of your CrowdStrike events will be writing to. So the Falcon Seam connector is going to grab all the events that CrowdStrike is logging, and then it's going to push those events to a syslog server, which in our case is gonna be Graylog. Graylog is the tool that we use for our log ingestion and is going to serve as our syslog server. And then Graylog is going to do the appropriate uh, writing to the correct index, uh, the field normalization that we wanna set, uh, any parsing, so Graylog is gonna take care of all of the rest of the heavy lifting for us. So for this full provisioning to work, we'll need the Falcon Seam connector, which we are going to deploy via a container running on our Copilot VM. Graylog is going to need an input created, a stream created, and an index created, which will store these events, which will kind of walk through the provisioning process uh, throughout, the, the, throughout this video. And then we'll also need our, of course, Grafana dashboards, which will allow us to visualize the data, which Copilot will also provide for us. So let's go ahead and actually deploy this integration for a customer. So if I go into my customers tab here and I select the customer I want to deploy this to, I'll select the details for this particular customer. I'll select my third party integrations. Now here I've actually already added the uh, client ID, client secret, base URL, and syslog port. Select add this integration. You'll select the CrowdStrike integration. You'll hit next and then fill out the same variables that I've defined here. The client ID and the client secret, we're going to actually get those from CrowdStrike. When you create the API client to actually authenticate with CrowdStrike's event stream endpoint, you're gonna get the client ID and the client secret. We then need to implement the base URL, depending on where they've provisioned your tenancy. And I found this document online that also has uh, the current base URLs for authentication. So this should also be evident to you within CrowdStrike's portal as to which base URL you are to authenticate with. But if you're US, um, there's two choices, either api.crowdstrike.com or api.us-2. If you're a government entity using CrowdStrike, you'll most likely use that base URL. Or if you're within the EU region, um, you'll likely use that URL. But again, that'll be evident to you within CrowdStrike's portal. Uh, where you'll actually create the API cred. So whatever base URL you have defined, that is what you will need to set within the base URL parameter here. Do also include the HTTPS uh, colon slash slash 
and then make sure to not include any backslash. Implement it directly as you see it within this documentation. And then we're going to define a syslog port. Our seam connector is going to be forwarding to Graylog. We need to actually dedicate a, a free and available Graylog port. Go into system, we're gonna go into inputs. In my example here, I've just selected port uh, 5557. Search for that port. Um, we see that it's not currently in use. Make sure that this is a free port that you have available for Greylog to listen on. So once I've got that defined and saved, I am then ready to deploy the CrowdStrike integration for this customer. So, and Copilot is going to be provisioning uh, the CrowdStrike integration for us in the background. The deployment has finished, and now let's actually walk through what actually happened on the back end. First, we first need to configure Graylog to be able to receive events from this particular integration. If we uh, refresh Graylog, what we'll see is our YouTube uh, CrowdStrike logs and events input. Um, here we can see that it's currently not running, select so start input. Again, there is a bug within Graylog, it seems to always fail this first time when you try to start an input. So if you do get that message, simply log into your Graylog server and just run a systemctl uh, restart Graylog server. This will restart Graylog and then um, the input will be listening and running and not in a failed state. This bug does only seem to apply to inputs. Here we can see, for example, it is running now. It's on the port, listening on port 5557, which is the one that we just defined, but it's not going to fail. So for whatever reason, when you create an input via the API, it seems to fail out the first time. It only applies to inputs. Maybe that's been fixed in release uh, six, which which I think Greylog is on now. If you just hit Gray, the Greylog service with a quick restart, then everything will uh, come back up as expected. Our input created, which again, our uh, seam connector will be forwarding these logs to. What also has been created is our particular index for these CrowdStrike integrations. So if I list out my indexes here, we'll see our YouTube uh, CrowdStrike events has been created with an index name of CrowdStrike-YouTube. Again, this is gonna be important because we want to separate our data from like Wazoo events, for example. We don't want them mixed within the same data bucket because now I can, I can build dedicated dashboards and and so this allows us to separate them out from one another, which I always, always, always recommend. And then our stream has also been created. So if I go to my stream um, for this particular YouTube customer, we will see our uh, YouTube CrowdStrike logs and events. If we look at our stream rules, we'll see the syslog type must be CrowdStrike. And then the syslog customer must be equal to YouTube, which if I go back into my input, we will also see that those two static fields have been applied. So here on my YouTube CrowdStrike login events, we see the static fields of syslog type of CrowdStrike and syslog customer of YouTube. That's giving the logic to Graylog as to how to, how to organize these events that are coming in. Copilot is gonna handle all this for you guys. So you won't need to manually go through this exercise, but this is just a little bit what's happening under the hood. And then we also have the CrowdStrike provisioning pipeline also be created. And if we select the edit connections, we see our stream has also been applied to this pipeline. So in terms of Graylog, everything is up and provisioned. If we also log into Grafana, for example, and if I go to my YouTube customer and go to dashboards, here we'll also have our CrowdStrike folder be created and we have our one dashboard um, that we've provided here. Also the data source, of is going to be created, which you'll see here as well. Again, correlating to the CrowdStrike-YouTube uh, index. Of course, you can also uh, add your own dashboards if you want. We just provide the one out of the box, but if you want to build more specific dashboards that pertain to your CrowdStrike events, you are more than welcome to, to do so. And if you want to share them with the community, let us know, and we could add them into the, to the default installation. Um, now, we've got everything in terms of our seam stack ready of to start to ingest the logs, but we need to configure the uh, seam connector that's actually gonna be pulling logs from CrowdStrike's endpoints. During the provisioning, if I go into the same directory where I have my Copilot application running, so if I cd into Copilot, you'll notice we have this data 
and uh, data directory. I know it's a little redundant, but it is what it is at the moment. So if I CD into this data data directories, then we have a separate folder, which will be named as the customer that you did the uh, CrowdStrike integration for. So in our case, the customer name was YouTube. So again, if I look back into Copilot, my customer name is YouTube. So we have our uh, customer name folder created. And if I CD into here, you'll see we have two files. We have a Docker Compose, and then we have the Falcon Host Client config file. The settings that we applied here will correlate to the settings within our config file. So here we have our correct API URL. So here we see the base URL, uh, api.crowdstrike.com. We see the client ID is set to test, the client secret, password 123. Our port for our syslog output is gonna be set to the one that we defined that gray log to be listening on. So in this case, 5557. You shouldn't have to change the config file. Uh, Copilot is going to place the uh, static variables that are set to match what you inputted within the Copilot application. If you ever need to change anything like after deployment, you can always change so, uh, do so by editing the, the config file uh, within the directory for your particular customer. And then we also have the Docker Compose file. So if I open this up, you'll see um, pretty simple. We're just including the config file that was just created. So we're gonna mount that to the container. And then the image that we're gonna pull is one that we've actually built for you guys already. So it's just called this cross track connector. You won't need to make any changes here. This is just for your awareness. The image that we're gonna be pulling is directly uh, from, from our GitHub packages. And then the container is actually going to be named this CrowdStrike connector. We've got everything provisioned, our template files are set, but we still need to actually start this container. But what I'm going to do is run a docker compose dash f just stating that I'm going to specify the file that the, the docker compose file that I want to use. So I'm going to just copy the, the YAML file that I have within my directory. I'm gonna say up and then I'm gonna say dash D to run it in the background. So what this is gonna do is first pull the, the Docker image if you don't have it locally already, and then it is going to start our CrowdStrike connector uh, container. Now if I do a Docker PS here, we'll also see that our CrowdStrike connector is also running for our particular customer. Here we have it for our YouTube. I can do, also do a uh, Docker logs and then give it the container ID dash dash follow. And uh, you'll see if there's any errors here. So you can see logs for the container if there's any errors. Of course, mine is just set with dummy uh, dummy variables. This is not gonna be valid on CrowdStrike's end, so they're just gonna deny this container trying to collect events. And if I go to my input within Graylog, you'll see that we have one active connection. So our container is able to connect to our Graylog input where it's actually going to send all the events to. And then that's it. So there is a little bit of manual work outside of doing the deployment within Copilot, and that being that you need to start the container. If you want to stop the container, like if I want to change my client ID for whatever reason or my client secret, um, you will need to run, instead of a uh, Docker Compose up, we're going to just replace that up with a down. So this will stop the container. I could then make my changes to my config file and then run the Docker Compose up again. Do make sure though that you have to, of course, be within the same directory that the Docker Compose IAML file exists. And if I want to bring the container back up again, I'll just run the same thing. And this is also going to be multi-tenanted as well because every client is going to have their own Docker container. Maybe LinkedIn is my next customer. I can now create a new container for LinkedIn's CrowdStrike integration that won't conflict with YouTube's and that's going to have its own direct port like what we've defined here and all the logic within the Seam stack will be applied to route that data to, to the correct index. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.